We know that the climate is changing, we know temperatures are increasing, and we know that that's going to impact um, our crop yields as it impacts all parts of life. And this program came about because we thought that we could introduce some new diversity for heat tolerance in chickpea, because chickpea, like all crops, is impacted by high temperatures. Here at the University of Sydney's Plant Breeding Institute in Narrabri, New South Wales, Professor Trethowen and his team have embarked on an ambitious GRDC investment to provide plant breeding companies with heat tolerant chickpea lines. Step one is bringing in some lines from overseas that we know grow well in heat. So things from India, from Pakistan, from the Middle East, we had even had a line from Mexico in there and being able to screen them here in Australia and see, okay, how do they do under Australian conditions, the time of year we get heat, what level it is, and then identify which of these ones that came from overseas are going to be useful. Step two is of the few that you find useful, you usually pick about 10, cross them with current Australian cultivars. And we do that in the glass house. It's a very fiddly little job with tweezers and um, you need a real, really good eye for the pollen and popping it on the, on the flowers. And then you grow out the resulting seed. Then step three is looking at how these seeds perform in Australia. And so what we want to do is find the ones that have the right mishmash combination of the heat tolerance but also ability to grow well under Australian growing conditions. They're yeah, very obvious those heat affected grain, aren't they? Absolutely. These ones will be fine. We'll re-sow these. These genetics are no good. The research builds on genetic gains made through the Australian Research Council Legumes for Sustainable Agriculture Hub since 2016, harnessing innovative technology and breeding processes to identify heat tolerant genes. We used two different screening methods to find heat tolerance in Australia. The first one was using heat chambers. These are big perspex containers attached to an air conditioner if you like, so we can control the level of heat. So we ran these for a couple of weeks during the flowering period and shocked the flowers with a heat source to see what that did to the pollen fertility and therefore resulting number of seeds and therefore resulting yield. The other method that we used was growing them in summer. So this is a very extreme environment that chickpeas wouldn't normally be um, susceptible to. So by doing that, we were able to see which ones could produce flowers and produce seeds. Not so much for yield testing, but to see if the pollen was still fertile at high temperatures. The normal material, like, like these lines we're sitting in front of right now, these are normal materials, these are, these are high yielding cultivars released for sowing in May and June. These materials collapsed under that high temperature. They didn't produce, they didn't produce pods, they just kept growing in fact. They didn't go through a reproductive phase, but there was this new class of material that did. And it went ahead and produced pods and finished its life cycle in 90 days. And suddenly we'd found something a bit different. That actually led to another arm to the work. So not only were we developing material for normal planting, but suddenly we had this new class of material that could be sown in late summer and finished before you plant wheat in the winter. And in many ways, this provides grain growers with more options. It's a positive sign that growers will soon be able to access high yielding, heat tolerant varieties and rethink traditional chickpea systems. We're currently testing the advanced lines. Um, so this, these are lines that we've looked at over five or six generations already to really pick the best offspring. And these are pre-breeding lines that are going through their final year of testing, ready to be um, sent to plant breeders to be crossed into Australian cultivars and then in the future released to growers. So we're really at the final stage of um, looking at the heat tolerance properties of these lines. We would hope out of this research that Australian growers would be able to have chickpeas that do better toward the end of the season when it starts getting hot. And under climate change scenarios and also further north and further west where heat becomes more of a problem in um, September and October, we would really hope that these lines would perform better and help growers get a better yield in the paddock. Thank you.